I'm Dale Moss, and I first and foremost want to thank you uh, for allowing me to come here today and have this TED Talk. And it's all about momentous moments today. And for my conversation, I'm going to talk about how I've maintained my identity through the numerous momentous moments that have taken place in my life. And, you know, if I have to think about my first momentous moment, it actually takes place in prison. I was eight years old. And in this momentous moment, I was visiting my father, Dale Sr. Now, my father struggled with heroin addiction and continued to struggle with drug and alcohol addictions for the first 20 years of my life. And, you know, I'm very thankful to say that, you know, for the last 13 plus years, uh, he's been doing great. But I remember when I was riding with my mother to the prison and we, we had this old busted up Cadillac DeVille uh, that I, I absolutely hated. But, you know, I'm sitting with her in the car and I, I tell her, I don't ever want to come up here again because every time I looked at my father in the face, I saw myself and I couldn't help but hear all the people who would tell me over and over again that you're going to wind up just like your father. Now, I also understood at a very, very young age that this image was becoming far too familiar. We were up at the prison so much, I knew every guard by name, and I knew all of the other inmates in the yard so well, it was as if they were uncles to me, quite honestly. So, um, you know, the day comes, and for whatever reason, even though I was extremely scared, I think I had enough courage, and I also understood my father very, very well. And we, we go into the visitation room, and I sit down, and I look my father in the eyes, and I say, Dad, I'm not going to come up here anymore and see you while you're in prison. I love you. I support you. But this is not the life that I want, and it's too hard for me to see you in here. And my father would always tell me that regardless of the addictions and the struggles that he was going through, this life was not meant for me. And I know this is why he respected my decision. And, you know, I'm very, very thankful that I've had a family over time that has understood me and allowed me to um, and supported me through moments like this. But this is the first moment in my life where I consciously was setting up a boundary to protect my identity and the trajectory of my life. And I did this in one of the most difficult circumstances because I was talking directly to my father. And by the way, I'm a junior, so I'm Baby Dale. That's Big Dale, uh, and I'm Baby Dale. But um, I did this by eliminating an environment that I knew didn't serve me. And it's profound to think that at the age of eight, I had the awareness and to start forming my identity and also stand strong with the boundaries that I had set at that time. Now, in this story and what you're going to hear throughout the rest of this conversation is really three principles that have showed up within my life that have allowed me to maintain my identity through momentous moments. And I think it's fair to say that most people probably correlate a momentous moment with a positive experience, but it can, in fact, be during a traumatic or a negative time, which will also breed some of the, the biggest growth. And in the next phase of this, uh, this conversation, you're going to hear me talk about managing environments. I'm also going to discuss the importance of 
your core values and staying true to those in opposition. And finally, it's gonna be boundaries. And boundaries are some of the most difficult things to set, but they're so vital. Um, and they've been so vital for me in different phases of my life. So um, we're in Philly. So uh, where are my sports fans at? Obviously sports fan, Eagles fans? Philly, Philly? Yes, Philly, Dilly. Philly, Dilly. Well, uh, before, um, uh, so I believe that some of you may have seen me uh, on television. Obviously, we talked about that a little bit before. But well before I was on reality TV, I was an NFL wide receiver with the Green Bay Packers and the Chicago Bears. And sports, for me, meant so much more than just competition. Growing up in a biracial family that was extremely poor, sports provided a form of acceptance in a world where we very rarely were accepted, whether that was because of the color of our skin, the fact that we were extremely poor, and also in our community, the knowledge and understanding of the struggles that my father was going through. And sports had this unique way, way of breaking down a lot of those barriers. Um, sports honestly provided hope for me and my family. And it was a form of identity. Now, I was recruited for both basketball and football out of high school. And I eventually chose to play Division I basketball at South Dakota State University. And after a successful four years of basketball, um, I thought back to being recruited for football. And I had stayed in contact with uh, the college football coaches. And they always wanted me to play both. And they said, hey, if you don't end up playing basketball professionally overseas and you want to come back to school, we'll have a scholarship for you. Well, I get to the end of my four-year career in basketball. I have the opportunity to potentially play professional basketball overseas, which is something that I always dreamed of. But in the back of my mind, I could not get rid of the thought and the idea of thinking, what if? And even though people thought, I was crazy, I hadn't touched a football in four years, I decided to come back to South Dakota State University and play football for one season. Now, I think it's important to think about like how many dreams never even get started because people are so afraid of the opinions of the outside world or they're simply afraid of failing. And in this moment, uh, not only did I make the team and not only did I play, but in my one season, I ended up leading our conference in receiving yards. And I put up numbers that would have put me in the top five receivers in school history in numerous categories. And this is what led to me signing a contract with the Green Bay Packers. And you think about you know, a young black kid, South Dakota, poor family. This was the ultimate dream for me. I could legitimately provide for my family in a way that I never, ever could have imagined. This was the highest point in my entire life. And I think about that moment and how much it meant to my family and my community. Well. Four years in, I have an injury, I'm released from a team, and everything I had ever dreamed of stopped in an instant. And in this moment, I felt like I had failed my entire community. I felt like I had failed my entire family. And I think about everything that I had ever known my identity for 26 years of my life as an athlete was completely gone. I went from this high point and I went to the lowest moment I had ever been in my life. But that moment right there was my momentous moment. And in that momentous moment, I knew that I had to reinvent myself. And in order to reinvent myself, I was gonna have to change my environment because I could never be something that 
I wanted to be if I stayed in the environment I was in, which was South Dakota. I knew that life wasn't for me. So when everyone was telling me to give up my dream of professional sports, come back to South Dakota and get a nine to five, what did I do? I upped and moved to New York City. And this is a city that I had never been in my life. This is a city where I had absolutely no family. But I knew there was opportunity there. And in my mind, I had already hit rock bottom. And I'm thinking, what else do I have to lose? If there's opportunity out there, I'm going to find it. Now, within six months, I had signed with one of the top talent agencies in the world in New York City, which led to a lucrative career as a model and also as a host. And this is something that I never could have imagined um, and I never saw coming. And a little over a year from the moment that I moved out there, I was at the Super Bowl, except this time I didn't have cleats, I didn't have pads, but I had a microphone and I was hosting during one of the biggest sporting events in the world. And you know, I still think about that story and just how wild life is. But you'll also see in this moment, I had to change my environment in order to be something that I'd never been. And I went against the opposition on two occasions when I came back to school uh, because I was following my truth. And also when I decided to completely change environments and go out to New York City. Now, I'm going to go into one more story. Um, and this one's like really, really interesting. But, um, you know, again, I think it's so important to understand and have some of these principles in place because everyone who, here who's in this audience has gone through transition. We've all questioned identity at some uh, stage in our life. And there's so many people here at Drexel University who are getting to, ready to embark on a new chapter. And, you know, for my last story, I want to jump to 2020. Good old 2020. Um, it was a year. And some of you may have seen me uh, on a little show called The Bachelorette, which we talked about a little bit earlier. But um, for someone who's been so guarded and so private with his personal and family life throughout my entire life, going on one of the most widely viewed shows uh, in the history of television for millions and millions of viewers to see your entire life was pretty daunting. And, you know, I'll be honest, I was probably the most secure that I've ever been at, my, uh, at that point in my life. Um, but in order to manage that and not lose yourself in that type of environment, it's extremely important that you set boundaries. And I think about going into the show, um, a way that I was able to maintain myself and not lose myself in that environment was by simply committing to not saying or doing anything that was outside of my character while I was on the show because I didn't want anyone or anything or any edit to manipulate my character and try to portray me as something that I was not. And you know, I feel really strongly about how that worked out and how that came out. But coming off the show was a completely different ball game. And I think you try to prepare mentally for all these things that are going to come up in life. But I'll tell you, there is nothing that can prepare you for waking up one morning and being one of the most followed, the most covered, the most recognized people in the entire country, um, where social media, mainstream media, is following each and every one of your moves. And not only that, but we were in a pandemic. So I think about the healthy environments that I had worked so hard to create were no longer existent. My friends and family uh, were all isolated from one another. And there were times in which, you know, for the first time in my life, like, I felt extremely lost. I felt uh, like I really had to find myself. And that's a moment when 
it's so important to do a deep dive and do a check-in, and I had to ask myself, like, who is Dale? Am I the same man? Am I really the man that I thought I was? And also, in that moment, uh, you know, I had to ask myself ultimately what I was w willing to sacrifice for happiness and also what was going to make me happy. And when I honed in on that, I had to set the boundary and I had to effectively, um, I, ha I had to set the boundary that anyone or anything that was in my life at that time that was negatively affecting it or taking away from my happiness and my family's happiness had to be eliminated for my mental health. And that was one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do, especially when it, a lot of those things went against the hopes and dreams of so many people in a public eye. And I think if I go through my momentous moments over and over again, uh, it, these three principles would show up time and time again. And you know, I want to take a couple seconds just to share with some of y'all in the audience ways that you can incorporate and set some of these boundaries to help you through some of these momentous moments or even some traumatic moments. And you know, when you're setting a boundary, the first thing you have to ask yourself ultimately is what do you want? Because you can't set a boundary if you don't know what you want. And then from that standpoint, if you set that boundary, you have to enforce it because a boundary that isn't enforced means absolutely nothing. And then another thing is you have to reflect on the boundaries that you set because what you might have set today is not going to necessarily be the same thing that you need or want a year down the road. And then finally, um, I think one of the best things you can do is ultimately simply work on saying no. So, um, you know, boundaries are so vital and so important in keeping us on track with who we are and who we want it to be. And, you know, one of my favorite quotes uh, that I'll leave you all with is simply be yourself uh, because everyone else is taken. And I think that's something that a lot of us should hold true, uh, stick to in today's day and age. So. Um, you know, thank you so much for allowing me to be here uh, and close out today's TEDx conference. Uh, this has truly been momentous, and um, that's all I got. Thank you.